to come. To me, when it comes to gunslingers, that OK Corral is the greatest gunslinger moment of all time. By the afternoon of October 26, 1881, the time for talking had passed. Our troubles with Tombstone's Cowboys had been escalating for two years, and the powder keg was finally about to blow. Virgil, Morgan, Doc, and I resolved to go down to the OK Corral and disarm Mike Clinton and his cronies by any means necessary. Most of the townspeople knew something was about to happen, probably just from their body language and from the armaments they were carrying. One eyewitness did hear probably Morgan say to Doc, let them have it, to which Doc said, all right. We rounded the corner of 4th and Fremont, and there stood the cowboys with their weapons in plain sight. They see pistols visible, rifles on the saddles. They see armaments everywhere. Boys, throw up your hands. I want your guns. And here we are, the two groups, suddenly for the first time in this two years of tension, all together facing each other, both of them knowing what the other one is there for. What do you do now? Oh! I don't want that! Now, this isn't thought about very much, but that vacant lot is 15 feet wide. They're literally on top of one another. At one point, they're so close together that the barrel of Doc's shotgun is pressed into the belly of Tom McClary. Doc Holliday's probably thinking, well, I have them now. If I let them go, they'll only ambush me tomorrow night. So Doc Holliday does something that I consider to be pivotal. He cocks the hammers on that double barrel shotgun. I believe that is the point of no return. And if there's any moral in this story is, do not take a drunk dentist to an arrest. In that moment, it was kill or be killed. There's all sorts of opinion on who clicked the hammer first, who shot first. Doesn't matter. Out of those nine guys, somebody was going to make a move, and suddenly they were all shooting. And there went the ball game. 